You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Well, as it would turn out, Wednesday ended up being a day that many of us assumed should happen, uh, really since the end of September, when LSU allowed 700 yards to Ole Miss, uh, but it's becoming increasingly cloudy as to whether or not it would happen. Uh, but this morning, uh, Brian Kelly, via statement through LSU, announced that four defensive assistants have been fired, including... LSU defensive coordinator Matt House. Along with Matt House, Kerry Cooks, Robert Steeples, and Jimmy Lindsay all informed they will not be back to the coaching staff in 2024. Um, if you're an LSU fan today, there is a giant exhalation, a big sigh of relief. This day has felt inevitable since September the 30th. Uh, that was the day that LSU played Ole Miss in Oxford and allowed 706 yards of offense to the Rebels. And it was after that game that this felt completely inevitable. As a matter of fact, I said it right here on the show after that game. I don't know how you survive this if you're Madhouse. You cannot field a defense that gives up more yards in a game than any defense in the history of this program and survive it. It really is that simple. At least it should have been that simple. And it never got better for this defense. Of course, you threw up on yourself against Arkansas but managed to win that. And a week after that is when you had the worst defensive performance in the history of the program at Ole Miss. After that, you went to Missouri and somehow snuck that one out 49-39 to despite another inept offensive or defensive performance. And it just never got better for this team. Thank God for Army. That shutout allowed you to pad the stats a little bit. But even with that, you were historically bad. 105th in total off, uh, total defense. 105th in total defense. 78th in scoring defense. 115th in pass defense. 85th in rush defense. 114th in third down defense. 109th in red zone defense. You were horrendous at every level of your defense. Your talent was deficient. Your coaching was horrendous. You do not survive something that badly at a place like LSU. Yet, yo, this decision wasn't decided Monday when LSU was in Tampa, at least not when that ball was teed up and kicked off. I am telling you that this was not decided Monday when LSU was kicking off against Wisconsin. But it's amazing what can happen when you go a month, right? You're no longer in the throes of the season. You go a month, and maybe things cool, and you think, oh, well, we can replace some assistants. I've told you here for at least a month that LSU was going to replace a minimum of two defensive staff members. Minimum. Minimum. Knew the defensive line and at least one of the spots in the secondary. Minimum. That was going to happen. And there was kind of the hope, as we've shared here, that Matt House would get a job and go to the NFL. And then Monday happened. And you made Tanner Mordecai, in one of the worst offenses in college football, look like, well, an elite offense. Tanner Mordecai, his season high going into Monday, was 277 passing yards. He threw for 378. He had thrown six touchdown passes all year. He threw two in the first quarter against your defense, three in total. You had to overcome twice, overcome a 14-point deficit against one of the worst teams in the country that averaged only 22 points per game this season. When we watched how hideous that was, and then not only that, what transpired after the game, a hat tip to Jacques Doucet, our friend from WAFB, who was on the field there at the ReliQuest Bowl, and he took this video, and you've probably seen it. If you haven't, you can find it on Twitter or social media. I'm going to play it here, Paul, if you want. There's a video of Matt House on the field after the game dapping up the defensive lineman. Among them is Makai Wingo, your number 18, your team leader. And when Matt House went to go try to dap up Makai Wingo, Wingo wouldn't extend his hand and try to walk away from it. That's your number 18. That's your defensive leader. That's a lot that you need to know. 
And I didn't see that video posted on social media. I had that sent to me by, let's just say, someone very influential within LSU athletics. That resonated with a lot of people. And Brian Kelly has worked so hard to build culture around this program, to rebuild the culture around this program. And when you saw that, after that performance, got a lot of people's attention. I'm not sitting here suggesting Matt House, got, Matt House got fired because of that video. But as things transpired Monday in that game, and then that started the leak, and then some of the conversations are with the portal window closing yesterday, that transpired. What was very clear is you had a culture problem within your roster and your coaching staff centered around Matt House and a potential return. And at that point, I think Brian Kelly had no had no option other than to make these changes. They were going to make staff changes. I've told you that for I've known that for a while. They were going to make at least two. You were they were going to they were going to make a change at defensive line and they were going to fire Robert Steeples. That was going to be done. But there was always the possibility more. And today it was more. It was almost the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, the only two defensive on field staffers that remain are John Jancic and Bob Diaco. Uh, Jancic, you'll remember, came from Georgia, was a, uh, an off-field analyst a year ago, was moved on-field this year to coach Jack Linebackers, which is really a specialty, his edge rushers. And then when Jimmy Lindsey fell ill, Jancic moved to defensive line. Bob Diaco, who's an analyst, moved on the field to coach outside linebackers. Both of those coaches were retained. They're still listed on the LSU website. So my assumption as of today is both will be back in some capacity We'll talk about how they piece this staff together moving forward, but the other four clearly now are gone. Uh, it is just amazing what can motivate movement. And Monday and what followed certainly kicked this thing into overdrive. If you're wondering, we did share some of this with you prior, but Matt House was extended a year ago. Uh, so he has two years on his deal. 2024, he was set to make $2 million. 2025, he was set to make two point one. So he's uh, contractually, he's owed 90% of the remainder of his contract over the remaining time period of that contract. So that's $3.69 million over the next two years, paid in monthly installments. They could do that. They can negotiate some type of settlement. I don't know what they're going to do. They'll have those conversations at a high level. But either way, LSU is going to have to pay Matt House while they're paying another defensive coordinator, whomever they bring in. You know... I know talent was down this year. It was. And that's undeniable. B.J. Ojolari and Ali Gay were your defensive ends a year ago. They're both in the NFL. Jaqueline Roy is playing in the NFL for the Minnesota Vikings. Micah Baskerville was a much better inside backer than any of the guys you had this year. You had Jay Ward, Joe Fouché, and Greg Brooks all at safety. You had Jark Bernard, Converse, and Makai Gardner as your cornerbacks. You were better at every level a year ago defensively than you were this year. Your talent was down. You missed in the portal. You had some young guys you thought would step up that didn't. That happens. But even with your talent down, it's no excuse for being literally the worst defense ever. And that's why you are where you are today. Because Matt House was unable to adjust to his personnel to make them competent. You didn't need to be dominant. You didn't need to be elite. Your offense was that. You just needed to be competent. And if you were competent defensively, you would have been a playoff team this year but you couldn't even manage competent, let alone great or elite. So Brian Kelly now has got to get this right. You know, we could talk about the other assistants as well. And Robert Steeples was in over his head. He was a young guy you brought in who had been a high school coach, spent one year in the NFL. You brought him in because of his ties to Missouri. You ended up getting uh, Makai Wingo out of that, Mac Markway out of Robert Steeples. But as a position coach at the major college level, he was in over his head. Uh, Kerry Cooks was a guy who was brought in with Brian Kelly from Notre Dame, who understood Brian Kelly's culture and his program and what he wanted to do. But ultimately, Kerry Cooks and Robert Steeples in tandem were not able to maximize the players in the secondary. As for Jimmy Lindsey, it's really unfortunate. I mean, he was brought in um, you know, replacing Jamar Kane and never got to coach this team because he fell ill right before fall camp. And as I understand it, has made somewhat of a miraculous recovery. And I think Jimmy wants to coach on the field, but I, I don't know that that's even possible. And if you're if you're Brian Kelly, I don't know how you could 
manage that uncertainty at this point. So they made the decision that they had to make, and I'm sure they'll continue to support Jimmy Lindsay however they can, but it's clearly not going to be in an on-field role or with this program in 2024. But if you're Brian Kelly and you make this decision and you blow out four defensive staffers, including your defensive coordinator, there is no one else to blame any longer. Everyone's out of the room. If these problems persist, it's on Brian Kelly. He's going to remake his defensive staff, and he's got to get it right so that LSU can get back to competing for championships again. Big day for uh, LSU football. Four defensive staffers fired, including Matt House. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.